Volunteerism. It's something the United Nations and global governments advocate as a way to engage people in their local communities and improve social capital. One study found that helping others can reduce early mortality rates by 22%. So it's no surprise that some of the world's top athletes have joined the fight for social causes. A house is just a building, but a home is where the heart is. That's something former Atlanta Falcons running back Warwick Dunn has always known. Home ownership was his late mother's dream, but Dunn realized it wasn't hers alone. During his first year in the NFL, he launched Homes for the Holidays, providing dwellings that are fully furnished, often for single-parent families. Today, through Warwick Dunn Charities, the now minority owner of the Atlanta Falcons still provides homes for the holidays, but his nonprofit organization has grown. It also offers financial education health and wellness programs, and college scholarships, a winning combination to strengthen and transform communities. With nearly 11,000 rushing yards, Warwick Dunn was one of the league's best running backs when he was playing in the NFL. But for Dunn, more rewarding inspiration is when a football player strives to follow in his footsteps off the field, as you'll see in today's executive profile. Tell me about growing up as a kid in uh, in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm one of six, so I'm the oldest of uh, of uh, six kids, and there's four boys and two girls. Right. And not having a lot, not really understanding, hey, that we didn't have any money back then. Right. And just being together, I thought we had it all. My mom was a Baton Rouge City police officer at the time, and that was her way of working hard and, and uh, supporting her family and she didn't ask for help from anyone. How did you find that organized sports? I mean, I, was it a big part of the community that you were li living in? Did all the kids play? We did not play or uh, have organized sports w in the community that we were in, in Scotlandville. We just played outside. Sure. You know, when I was seven, eight, nine years old, we played street football, street basketball. It took a guy coming around that community asking the other kids, like, who's the fastest kid back here? Who's this or who's that? And this guy came and he found me. He asked me, did I want to run track? That's when I got introduced to organized football. I was small. I was, I mean, if you thought I was a small professional football player, just imagine seven years old when I started playing. I was the smallest kid out there. And then when I started playing, I was the last kid picked because we mm -hmm. just played street tackle football or touch football. And then when they saw that people couldn't tackle me, they can barely touch me and I mm -hmm. was running around, I started being the first kid being picked. Being the smallest kid, do you think that helped you with your drive in terms of becoming more competitive as an athlete? I think I got a little bit of that from my dad. He ran track, mm -hmm. so uh, he was competitive with my mom. She was state champion in the high hurdles. She played fast pitch softball. Mm -hmm. She taught us about what it would take to be the best that you can be, and she challenged us. Uh, talking about your mom, she was killed in the line of duty. Right. Uh, she was off duty at the time, but she was working. You were coming off of the most traumatic thing that any young person could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. What about Florida State gave you the sense of, of confidence that you could transition from all that you went through to a college setting. It was only like two weeks after I lost my mom, and I just wasn't in the mind frame to really uh, take the whole experience in. When I met with Coach Bowden, he treated me like a son. Mm -hmm. and, and early on, uh, I think we just built a rapport that uh, had open door policy when I was there, that I can come and talk to him. So I just built a connection with him and a relationship that I really felt comfortable. And I decided to commit to Florida State but I, I only committed because I made a deal with Coach Bowden. I okay. said, um, every school they were recruiting me to play defensive back. And I, I asked Coach Bowden, I said, I would really like to come, but I want to play running back. Now, I'll commit if you allow me to play running back. If it doesn't work out, I'll move to defensive back. And he was like, deal. At what point did um, the giving back piece step into it? When was it that really hit you that I got to do something that's going to honor my mom's legacy and all that. When did well, it hit you? My rookie year in Tampa when Coach Dungy, he set all the rookies down in the room. It's like, listen guys, if you're going to live here, you want to be a part of this community, you want to give back. It was like, what can I do to, to give back to impact the Tampa community? And I, I thought, wow, my mom, you know, I knew what her dream was. She wanted to own her own home and never could do that. 
I knew she couldn't save up for a down payment, and if we could get a house, we didn't have the money. My mom made $36,000 raising six kids. Right. So I thought about my mom. You know, I didn't really think too much of the program. I just wanted to say, hey, I, I did something in the community. I gave back. It was pretty cool. But after doing three homes that first um, Thanksgiving, you know, I went home and watched the news. It's like, wow, I've changed a family's life. You know, three individuals. I can't believe it. The second mom picked me up and squeezed me. I, she's so excited. All I did was just help her, you know, down payment and put some furniture in the house. It's not a big deal. And that's when it really hit me. It was just like, wow, I want to do this again and again and again. The more that I started to do it, the more that I thought about what the city of Baton Rouge did uh, mm -hmm. for myself and my family, how they started a fund when my mom passed away and people donated money. And that's how we were able to pay bills and survive all those years. I just felt like they taught me something and it took me a few years to really understand and catch a grasp, get a good grip and grasp of it. And I had motivation from Coach Dungy. And then it's just about the execution of really uh, following through with my mom's uh, dream of home ownership. I can tell you, handing over keys, seeing a kid, seeing a family walk through the front door, a kid run into their own room, they can't believe this is mine. Oh my God, to me that's life changing. Work, you, this started off with you just building homes for, for families. Now it looks you're taking in the direction of WD communities, building communities. What is that all about and what are you trying to accomplish with that? Well, for the, for the last 21 years, it's been work done charities, the Homes for Holidays program where we have assisted single parent families who are becoming first time homeowners. Mm -hmm. Just started this new entity called WD Communities where we want to go out now and, and help families break generational poverty. Working through where the families are transitioning from uh, rental properties or, or getting the credit and so forth that together to becoming homeowners. Just uh, trying to impact people in, in the long term. So we want to definitely tackle generational poverty and not just the first generation, but second. Warwick Dunn, along with Muhammad Ali, Jeff Gordon, Mia Hamm, and others, founded the Athletes for Hope in 2007. The organization helps professional athletes, sports industry professionals, and fans get involved in charitable causes.